Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into some common financial mistakes that you might not even realize you're making. From neglecting your emergency fund to missing out on credit card rewards, these oversights can seriously impact your financial well-being. But don't worry, we're going to break down these mistakes one by one, and I'll give you actionable steps to get back on track. Remember, financial freedom is a journey, and it's never too late to make positive changes. Stick around to find out how to avoid these pitfalls and improve your financial health. Let's get started. All right, let's talk about the emergency fund. This is something I preach about all the time and for good reason. It's the one thing that can save you from complete financial disaster when an unexpected expense pops up. And trust me, unexpected expenses always pop up. Think about it. Your car breaks down, you have a sudden medical bill, or maybe you lose your job. These situations are stressful enough without the added worry of how you're going to pay for them. That's where your emergency fund swoops in to save the day. Now you might be thinking, Graham, I have some money in my checking account, I'm good, right? Well, not exactly. Your emergency fund needs to be separate from your everyday spending money. It's not for that new phone you've been eyeing or a weekend getaway. It's a dedicated safety net for true emergencies. So, how much should you have in your emergency fund? Ideally, you want to aim for three to six months worth of living expenses. I know that might seem like a lot, but remember it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Start by calculating your monthly expenses, rent, utilities, groceries, the essentials. Then multiply that number by three to six. That's your emergency fund goal. Now I know it can be tough to save that much, especially if you're on a tight budget. But here's the key, start small. Even if it's just 50 or $100 a month, the important thing is to be consistent. Set up an automatic transfer from your checking account to a separate savings account specifically for your emergency fund. You won't even miss that money, but it'll be there when you need it most. Trust me, having that financial cushion will give you peace of mind and protect you from going into debt when life throws you a curveball. Let's talk about credit cards. Now I know what you're thinking. Credit cards? Aren't those dangerous? And yes, they can be if you're not careful. But here's the thing. If you're responsible with your credit and pay your balance in full every month, credit cards can actually put money back in your pocket. Think of it this way. You're already spending money on everyday purchases like groceries, gas, and bills, right? Well, why not get rewarded for it? That's where credit card rewards come in. There are tons of different rewards programs out there from cash back to travel points to miles. The key is to find a card that aligns with your spending habits and goals. Do you travel a lot? Look for a card with great travel perks. Are you more of a homebody? Cashback might be the way to go. Once you've found the right card, use it for all your everyday purchases. But, and this is crucial, make sure you're only spending what you can afford to pay back in full when the bill comes. Don't fall into the trap of overspending just to earn rewards. That defeats the entire purpose. Now let's talk about maximizing those rewards. Many cards offer bonus categories that earn you extra points or cash back on certain purchases. For example, you might earn 3% back on groceries and 2% back on gas. Pay attention to these categories and use the right card for the right purchase. Another tip is to take advantage of sign-up bonuses. Many cards offer lucrative bonuses just for signing up and spending a certain amount within the first few months. This is free money, people. Just make sure you can hit the spending requirement responsibly. Remember, credit card rewards are a tool, not a crutch. Use them wisely, pay your balance in full every month, and watch your rewards pile up. All right, let's talk about something that might seem small but can actually have a huge impact on your finances, those seemingly insignificant daily expenses. You know what I'm talking about? The $5 latte, the $10 takeout lunch, the $3 energy drink on your way to work. Individually, these purchases might not seem like a big deal, but here's the thing. Those small expenses can add up over time, and I'm not talking about a few dollars here and there. I'm talking about hundreds, even thousands of dollars over the course of a year. Think about it. That daily $5 latte adds up to $150 a month. That's $1,800 a year. Imagine what you could do with an extra $1,800. You could invest it, pay down debt faster, or even take that vacation you've been dreaming of. Now I'm not saying you have to cut out all the little things that bring you joy, but I'm asking you to be mindful of your spending habits, track your expenses for a month, and see where your money is actually going. 
You might be surprised by how much you're spending on things you don't even really need or enjoy. Once you have a clear picture of your spending, identify areas where you can cut back without drastically changing your lifestyle. Can you make coffee at home instead of buying it every day? Can you pack your lunch a few times a week instead of eating out? Remember, it's not about deprivation. It's about making conscious choices with your money and prioritizing your financial goals. By cutting back on those small, unnecessary expenses, you'll free up more cash flow to put towards the things that truly matter to you. Let's talk about investing and more specifically why it's crucial to start investing early. Now you might be thinking, investing? That's for rich people, right? Wrong! Investing is for everyone and the sooner you start, the better. Here's why, it all comes down to this magical thing called compound interest. In simple terms, compound interest is the interest you earn on your initial investment plus the interest you earn on any accumulated interest. It's like a snowball effect for your money. The earlier you start investing, the more time your money has to compound and grow exponentially. Let me give you an example. Let's say you invest $1,000 today and earn an average annual return of 7%. In 30 years, that $1,000 will have grown to over $8,000. That's the power of compounding. Now let's say you wait until 10 years from now to start investing that same $1,000. Even with the same 7% average annual return, your investment will only grow to around $4,000 in 20 years. That's a significant difference. The bottom line is this, time is your greatest asset when it comes to investing. Don't let procrastination rob you of the opportunity to build wealth over the long term. Even if you can only invest a small amount each month, the most important thing is to start now. There are tons of different investment options out there, from stocks and bonds to real estate and index funds. Do your research, find investments that align with your risk tolerance and financial goals, and start putting your money to work for you. Okay, let's talk about retirement. I know, I know, it might seem like it's a lifetime away, especially if you're in your 20s or 30s. But trust me, the sooner you start planning for retirement, the better off you'll be. Retirement might seem like a distant concept, but time flies by faster than you think. Before you know it, you'll be reaching retirement age and you don't want to be caught off guard. Planning for retirement is crucial for securing your financial future and ensuring you can maintain your lifestyle and enjoy your golden years without financial stress. So, how do you start planning for retirement? The first step is to figure out how much money you'll need. This will depend on your individual circumstances, such as your desired lifestyle, health considerations, and whether you plan to travel or pursue hobbies. Once you have a rough estimate, it's time to start saving and investing. Take advantage of retirement savings plans like 401, Ks, and IRAs. These accounts offer tax advantages that can help your money grow faster. If your employer offers a 401 K match, contribute enough to get the full match. It's essentially free money. If you're self-employed or your employer doesn't offer a retirement plan, consider opening an IRA. Remember, retirement planning is a marathon, not a sprint. Even if you can only contribute a small amount each month, the most important thing is to be consistent. As your income grows, increase your contributions accordingly. Planning for retirement might not be the most exciting topic, but it's one of the most important financial decisions you'll ever make. Start early, be consistent, and enjoy peace of mind knowing that you're taking control of your financial future. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more financial tips and advice. Remember, knowledge is power, and the more you know about managing your money, the better equipped you'll be to achieve your financial goals. Let us know in the comments if there are any other financial topics you'd like us to cover. We're here to help you navigate the world of finance and make smart decisions with your money. See you in the next video.